Defog, this is the tastiest video we've ever done. It's your introduction to professional food photography. One of my big passions in life. Man, hmm. Best thing you get to eat the food after. In my mind, getting into food photography is not as complicated as a lot of you may think it is. For me, there are five main components, and if you get that down, you're on your way. And you can learn and evolve very quickly with food photography. So the first main point about food photography for me is the components in the dish. Now, that means, what is the dish made up of? If you've got a steak with some chips and a side salad, you're pretty much looking at three main components to the dish. And you want to be showing off the main components or giving the people an idea of what's on the plate, what's to be enjoyed. Out of those three main components, the salad's not the highlight of the dish. You're ordering a steak dish. So the steak becomes your main component out of those. And that's generally gonna be what you want to place more in the foreground of the shot. Because most food photography is generally macro work, you are gonna struggle with this issue in terms of getting your components plated correctly. If you haven't got a food stylist that's helping you out, that's something that, that you need to learn and you need to realize. Let's take, for instance, a fast food shot of a burger. You're not gonna put the chips and the Coke in the front of the shot. So it makes perfect sense. The burger comes to the front and the chips and the Coke are additional elements that come with the main component of the meal. All right, so done. So in this example over here, the bread in this image is more of a side to the three main components. So during the shot, I realized that it was just too spaced out and I had to swap the bread and the cheese around just to get the rank and the order correct in this shot. The second thing following off of the main component is that you do need to try your best to show all of the components of the dish. So in this example over here, you can see there's not too much wrong with this shot, except that I don't get a really good idea of the true nature of the sauce. Now in this next picture, ah, oh, okay. I just had to bring in a very clearly open clamshell to finish off the shot of the dish so that everyone understands exactly what's on the plate. So the other thing to be concerned about when you're considering angles is make the food look sexy. As you can see here, this donut was mm, unhappily sat on top of custard tart. If you just turn it properly, you start seeing this picture is so much more voluptuous and fresh and feels like it's oozing and plentiful and falling over the side and it's a lot more appealing from this angle than the boring first angle. So the last thing about angles then is also where the plate is in front of you. Now this is not so much about having the main component in the front but if you have a look at this shot Although it looks appetizing, I have absolutely no idea of exactly what this is on the plate. By turning the angle slightly, it is revealed and it becomes clear to the person looking at the picture that this is a French trimmed rack of lamb. These are things that are generally subjective. What is not subjective about angles is when you have a bowl or a plate, you do need to see inside the dish. You do need to see clearly enough what the components of the dish are. So in this example over here, although it's not in focus, you kind of get the idea that the sauce at the back could probably be a cheese sauce because it's yellow, and the one in the front is relish kind of sauce or a tomato sauce. So that's your angles and how that dictates the way you shoot food. So the fourth point, and I don't want to say the most important point, because everything is critical to getting a good food shot, but that keep it fresh. Don't let the dishes stand around forever. Don't let, if there's a piece of fat on the meat, you're gonna see that it's getting cold 
and it's becoming congealed. So be ready for the shot. When it comes down, keep it fresh. Especially important with leaves. If there is a garnish like parsley or something like that on top of something that is hot, that will wilt. So in two or three minutes, it's not going to be looking as appetizing anymore. So bear all of these facts in mind that you need to be prepared. I usually take a test plate, set everything up with a test plate, and then get my main dish in and shoot that in as little time as possible. Then the fifth point is, because this is generally macro photography, and because you want to keep it light and looking appealing, and feeling like a lifestyle thing that you're engaging in, you're generally gonna have quite a shallow depth of field. So focus in food photography becomes absolutely critical. I think that's probably what I lose most of my shots to, is that in the heat of the moment, I just didn't get my focus right on exactly the right element, usually the main component. So here's a really good example of focus being critical. I wanted to really put a stamp that this is a lemon citrus flavored dessert and by placing my focus on the garnish and letting it fall in the middle of, of the main component of the dish, it just put more of a stamp on this dish as opposed to if I had a focus on the front portion of the plate, the white on top, we're not really sure what that is in this photograph but the lemon gets the message across. You need to be focusing on the main component and make sure that people understand what the dish is about. So pay a lot of attention to your focus. You're gonna save yourself a lot of heartache. Those are the five main points that you need to look at in food photography. I've left probably the most critical aspect out, but that's because it's an overriding aspect and that's the lighting. So this whole tutorial, I've only used one light. We thought that we'd just follow up from the previous fashion portraiture with one light tutorial and do some food photography just with one light. A lot of people in schools will be taught that for still life work, which generally this is still life work, you need quite a few lighting elements. I'm here to dispel that myth Take one light and get started, don't be scared. The main thing that you have to think about in your lighting is to keep the food appetizing, to keep it looking natural. Don't overpower the food with lighting. It's gonna look like a bad 70s or 80s stylized food shot. Trends haven't evolved back to that yet. At the moment, we're still trying to keep it light, healthy, natural, real, and believable. So lighting needs to be relatively gentle. Even though I'm shooting only with one light here, what I'm doing is I'm using the available light, the natural light, and I'm positioning my food in a place that I can balance just my flash from the front, which is the thing that I can control, that is my full. And I determine how much of the food I see with my full from the front. As you can see, I'm uh, using a deep XL shaper, which gives me as close as I can get in this type of environment to a lovely natural light. Now, if you don't have something like this, you might want to maybe bounce a light or you try and use a big shaper, but it's gentle. That's the idea, is that it's gentle. It mustn't be directional and harsh from the front. When I'm balancing, I try to have my light coming from the back which is in this situation, the available natural light, that needs to be maybe two stops stronger than what you're filling with from the front. Dependent on each dish, you might need to fill a little bit harder from the front sometimes, but as a general rule, if you're stronger from the back, it's got a beautiful natural lit spill that comes over the food that just makes it feel appetizing and welcoming. And I think the idea of that is that it should be believable. You should look at food and feel like you could be sitting down with this plate in front of you, that it's not a contrived situation. I often go on when we talk about portraiture, about not intruding on an editorial story, that it needs to feel realistic, that you are voyeuristically watching something take place. And I think food is 
pretty much the same. We are voyeuristically fantasizing about this dish and eating this dish over here. So it needs to be quite believable. And when it's overlit, once again, it's not believable. So what I'll usually do with lighting then is I'll select a table and maybe just shift the table closer to a window area or an open door area and by shifting that closer to the available light or further from the available light I'm controlling that back exposure and how harsh that is. So that'll be the first thing that I do. Once I'm happy with that positioning then I'll bring in my fill from the front and I'll start controlling my fill. I think the thing with food photography is which is great on, on these B1 heads, is that your control is infinite in, in, tenth, in a tenth of a stop. So I can be incredibly precise about exactly how much lighting I want to place on the food. If you haven't got that, if you've only got a flashlight with um, a quarter power or an eighth power or something like that, you might have to move your flash a little bit further in or a little bit further out, but you will need to control your full very carefully. I think the greatest thing though about food photography and anyone that's been wanting to get into it, there's no makeup artists or hairstylists or models or anything like that. You can create a dish and you've got time to play and explore the light quite easily without having to worry about the five or six other people in your space. So it's, it's comfortable and relaxing for me to shoot food. So defog, there we go, my secret is out. My other work passion in life is food, cooking it, eating it, photographing it, um, and we'll probably follow up next time and put me in the kitchen, get me to prepare some food and shoot some food for you. We'll bring everything out of the restaurant and into the home and make it completely accessible with some new lighting tricks. Join us next time, until then, please share these videos, subscribe to our channel and help us get it out there. See you next time.